Hi, I'm Maddie Harlan from Permaculture Magazine and I'm going to show you round our vegetable garden. And starting here, this is zone one, this is our patio right by the back door. And this is where we have all the plants that we're propagating. I put the plants below that don't want to be in full sun and I harden off the plants that are ready to be planted out in the vegetable patch and I can keep a really close eye here because literally it's by my back door but come and have a look at our main vegetable garden so starting off this is the main vegetable patch in the garden it's about 12 meters by 15 meters so it's not a great deal of space it's a raised bed garden heavily mulched and no dig and it's been no dig ever since we started it probably ooh, well over 10 or more years ago as a no dig garden this bed's incredibly productive this is our salad bed it's got lots and lots of different varieties and different types of plants here there is wild rocket there's esme rocket as well there's a line of white radishes, bunyards, matchless lettuce that was modular sown, sue lettuce again modular sown and we just picked the outside leaves. There's also mizuna and mabuna, a pak choy, um, a mustard in here and, and a lovely oak leaf mixed lettuce at the end. And as I said this was sown eight weeks ago and as these plants come to maturity, like this um, rocket that's going to seed, we'll, when they come to the end of their life, we'll whip them out, put a bit more compost down and re-sow. So it should keep us fed in lettuces all winter. And we love our salads. Salads are expensive to buy from the supermarket and they're often washed in chlorinated water. So they're one of the first things that any small garden should have as a food crop. In this part of the garden we've got quite intensively sown beds. This bed we're into cropping onions with spring onions and in the middle a crop of carrots. These are nante. We hope that the carrot, the cabbage, sorry not the cabbage, the carrot fly won't get them. It's a bit of a risk but we hope that companion planting will win over. We've then got different types of beetroot here, more carrots and we always want to grow these pot marigolds. They self seed and then we just plant them on in the corners when they've grown up. In this bed there's turnips and again we've hidden some carrots in here, um, a spinach and more spring onions. And this plant, what's this one? Just, oh yeah, it's a swede, best of all to be specific. In front of me, we're growing potatoes in pots. These are a little, one pink fir apple and then another um, potato that was given to me by someone in Ireland. The thing about growing potatoes in pots is you have to water them. They're very hungry plants and in this drought that means daily watering. This is a bit more of a perennial bed. Um, we've got perennial kale here and as you can see the pigeons have had a go at it. We've also, we're also growing artichokes. I'm allowing some land crest to go to seed over there and I've got a few bits of, um, there's some broad beans that were left over um, and they'll come out once these artichokes get bigger and I've also got some early beetroot that was sown, modular sown in about early March in the greenhouse and then planted out and again this will be ready uh, when the artichokes ready to really take over. Behind me we've got peas growing up circular cages of pig wire and inside is a bit of an experiment because we've planted brassicas and we hope that the cabbage white butterflies possibly might not discover the brassicas because the peas 
are forming a pea shield around them. But this is very experimental and of course if they do discover we'll have to pick off the caterpillars before they eat the brassicas. I've also got a crop of celeriac because we love it and this is in truth a bit of an unsuccessful asparagus bed because the rabbits dug up and ate the asparagus during a big um, snow event one winter so we multi-crop we take a bit of asparagus and mainly we plant annuals there in front of me is the courgette bed um, we did take quite a risk and plant although we're on the south coast in Hampshire we planted the courgettes very early and we did get a little bit of frost damage from a late May frost and I didn't fleece them or protect them in any way but as you can see they've recovered well and I like to interplant sunflowers this is Enorma um, variety among the courgettes for a bit of colour and later on in the season the heads as bird food Behind me is our version of the two sisters rather than the three sisters. We find that in this climate there just isn't enough light and length of season for growing sweet corn with climbing beans. And also we don't have enough space to space it out. So what we do, instead of planting pumpkins as ground cover plus climbing beans plus sweet corn, we plant the sweet corn and we intercrop with dwarf French beans and we find that we just give them just enough room to produce and no more and then the ground cover is the mulch. Just one point about our garden, you'll see lots and lots of this wood. This is for two reasons, we have some guest dogs staying with us who are not as beautifully educated as our border terrier and they do rather love hopping up on our vegetable beds especially when they're freshly sown. The other thing is that when we are mulching this heavily because we're, we are intensively cropping the blackbirds absolutely love digging up the raised beds and hoofing it all onto the on, onto the path so at the moment we're protecting from blackbirds and dogs. Lastly in this area is the beautiful broad bean pyramid. We start off by planting this bed purely with broad beans. We keep it as well weeded as we can and then when they start to flop we put up a pyramid. But what we're trying to do is we're trying to stack our functions in space and time. So we've also planted three varieties of squash around the frame and they are going to grow up. So by the time we've cropped the broad beans and we take the plants out, the squashes will have taken over, grown up the frame and, and will be dangling down ready to harvest. And you may wonder, what is this? strange object. Well this is literally for if we get a high wind this is a counterbalance because you can imagine once the squashes have got to the top this could become a top heavy structure and we find by putting a few litres of water so a couple of kilos as a counterbalance gives us just enough strength in a raised bed to hold the frame down. And lastly, again stacking, is our lovely tabouro growing up the shed. It drops really, really well there every year. We give it a good old feed with manure and we get a lovely crop of large, beautiful, tasty berries. Delicious. This part of the garden is where we make our compost. These are three tractor tyres that are stacked one on top of the other. They make a very large holding bay for plants, uh, um, for compost making, and they heat up in the sun, so they provide an excellent free composter. We also make compost in Daleks as well, which we turn regularly. 
and we compost everything we can. All garden waste, weeds, cardboard and shredded paper. The food waste we gen from the kitchen we generally put into a worm bin and a hot bin and, and we move that along much faster. This is mainly for hot composting of garden waste. And here is a thousand litre water tank and this is a really important part of our rainwater harvesting. We have very smaller bar barrels around the property but this one very very rarely if ever runs out even in a drought and it's fed and fills off the shed so it's filling up all winter and then pretty much sustains us through the stump summer with our watering. A couple of months ago we built this brassica cage because we love brassicas we get an awful lot of cabbage white butterflies coming in and as you've already seen pigeons like our kales as well. So we built this out of totally recycled materials and it's totally removable so it's easy to get access to weed and you can harvest by lifting this side and in here we've interplanted some spring onion, onions, Lisbon spring onions, which we will probably harvest fairly soon. There's red Russian ragged kale, which again will pick the outside leaves and begin to eat. And then there's also sprouts in here, a couple of field and kraut cabbages and some broccoli, which will grow, we hope, very high and give us a lovely sprouts for Christmas dinner. On this side is our herb garden and also we're growing um, rhubarb here but bay tree all manner of herbs and inevitably wherever we go in the garden oxide daisies seed themselves and we let them be the insects love them and it brings insects into the garden and then behind me is a runner bean frame that we built a couple of months ago as well and we filmed both of these projects for our YouTube channel. We'll give you the links at the end. The idea with this runner bean frame is the beans grow up and over and you pick them from underneath. Being permaculturists, we want to stack our functions as well. So we're going to use what will become the shade of the runner bean cage to grow um, lettuces in. So we've got actually um, chicory and some cost lettuce and in the lighter areas I'm just going to put some leftover dwarf French beans. They are a quilon uh, variety from Tamar Organics. So really we're stuffing as much as we can into this garden to feed ourselves and then leaving the rest of the garden which we will be showing you soon as a forest garden and a nature reserve and room also for our apiary. So I really hope you've enjoyed this tour. We're going to invite you back in a month's time. So please don't miss um, more about the garden and permaculture. Press the subscribe button and please also press the notification bell and then we'll get notifications of when we produce another video. And thanks very much for watching. Stay happy, keep gardening.